All right, so this video is going to be a little bit different in that I'm going to, to do a voiceover versus record live because the project at this point is already completed. But at this point, the engine's pulled out of the truck, and I'm assessing how I'm going to get the Toreg pan to fit, as well as a rack and pinion conversion, which will be needed to run the Toreg pan. So in these few pictures, you can see that there's a rack sitting in there that's actually from Mark II GTI. Uh, the dimensions seem like it would work well, but there was... Uh, a problem with this rack so then I get switched to a Mustang rack which will be coming up. Alright so in this picture you'll see that there is a welded in K member now with a level on top of it and the Mark II rack is still sitting there with a welded brace that goes across right where the motor mounts are. And It's at this point where there really is no turning back because that K brace is welded in directly where the old steering box actually bolts into. Uh, so at this point, there is no turning back, and now we're trying to get into fitting the pan. So based on the placement of the pan for the, from the Toreg, uh, you will need to run a, a rack and pinion because the, the old school, uh, I call them windshield wiper, uh, steering components get right in the way, right where that pan is, so there's no way to run this Toreg pan with running the, uh, the regular subframe. So what I ended up doing here is I uh, braced with a, with a square tubing across the, the front of the subframe. And then uh, once I knew that the frame wasn't going to move because I had the K member welded in as well as that brace, I was able to cut the two sides out with a sawzall, plate it, and then use rectangular tubing and cut it uh, at the right angles and then uh, <clears throat> weld it into the frame. Now with the subframe welded in between the, uh, the two uh, points in the chassis, uh, the, the oil pan can now clear, which is great, and then uh, it's time to figure out how to mount the rack and pinion uh, into this, this chassis. Um, and one of the challenges with it being it's so narrow, uh, to get the, the mounting points correct, getting the rack and pinion travel correct, as well as the flexural points for the tie rods have to be in the right spot to prevent a lot of bump steer or weird geometry, steering geometry angles. Uh, so those are the next uh, impasses we are going to go through. Uh, through this video. So after I had the realization that the Mark II GTI rack was not going to work because it's a it's a, a rear mount rack versus a front mount which changes the uh, the orientation of the rack and pinion meaning left is right, right is left, um, I purchased this Mustang II rack. Uh, I like this rack because it has solid bolting points uh, as well as there's nice bushings that you can mount uh, which will help vibration and just make the steering a little bit nicer to handle. Um, and they're relatively inexpensive and the, uh, the input shaft there for the, or the pinion shaft for the, for the rack is nice and long so it makes a really nice angle for where you have to mount it for the, the output of the, the steering column as you can see in some of these pictures. So at this point I have the mounting for the rack completed and bolted to the rack and now I have to get it to into or welded into the truck. Uh, so at this point all these pictures are really just lining it up, leveling it, using a laser, making sure it's in the right spot, getting the uh, steering knuckles all worked out so that they work and the, the tie rods move back and forth without uh, any binding. Um, and then it's to the point here where I'm laser, laser leveling it uh, and getting it ready to get tacked into the truck and then welded. Um, so by the end of this, we'll get to a point where it is welted in the truck, uh, and then you can kind of see the mounting points where the, the bolts and stuff uh, land, as well as the end of the tie rods or the output of the, the rack uh, and the tie rod boots are a little bit past the, uh, the, the uh, flexural point for the control arms, which is not good. So after doing some research on suspension geometry, steering angle geometry, and things of that nature, um, I had realized that I didn't like the way that the rack and pinion fit in the truck and then the, the angle or the positioning of that inner tie rod was past the suspension control arm point, which uh, I think would create some binding and cause some, some odd bump steer, uh, which could be, make the truck very dangerous. 
I then found a company on Instagram when I had Instagram uh, called Level Level Seven Motorsports, and uh, they build a lot of truck frames from scratch. Uh, so I reached out to this guy Jesse, who is super helpful, um, and kind of talked through some of these things, and he suggested some rack ideas. But in the meantime, uh, uh, this is a, a, a Pinto rack, which uh, is commonly used in drag racing applications. Um, and now that I've had it in there and I can drive with it, I know why, uh, considering the rack travel is not very long. Uh, but it does provide ample clearance for the Toreg pan, uh, and it also was pretty easy to mount. Um, and it also uh, made the, the steering angle geometry uh, somewhat correct. I was able to get the tie rods to basically be straight across uh, the whole entire truck, uh, which gives me appropriate Ackerman and things of that nature. Um, but overall, the truck is running, driving, it steers. Um, it does take a few K turns to get it turned around in a shallow parking lot, but that's about the extent of the, the trouble now with the rack. So now that the rack is finally welded, bolted in, uh, it was time to fit the pan. This took me a very long time to get the positioning right. I did a lot of measurement without a block in the in the engine bay, so it was simply just putting the pan in, aligning it, measuring off the block, measuring back in the truck with the pan, uh, and I come to find out it's really close in two corners, actually hitting in one corner. Uh, so I decided to modify the pan slightly. Uh, so the next picture we'll get into is using probably one of the most dangerous tools on the planet, which is a vertical bandsaw if you're not very careful, but it made quick work of cutting the pan where I needed to, and now in this picture you can see I have one area welded, uh, and then the other corner gets welded, uh, and then I did a hot water test where I filled this with super hot water, uh, basically let it sit overnight to see if there was any leaks, and fortunately nothing leaked out, uh, so it was time to, to bolt it back in the engine and uh, get it dropped in, which you'll see shortly. So now I have the pan just bolted onto a dummy block, which is an empty block, no crank, no nothing in it except for a water pump. Uh, I set it in here, got the motor mounts all set up, um, and with the pan on, the engine in, I was able to put the steering column and everything in, and uh, there was proper clearance. Uh, if you're wondering why I have the string across there, that's to, to make sure the engine was mounted in the appropriate place and it aligned with the rear end. Uh, but at this point, we were a go, and uh, it was time to move on to the, the real motor. Once I knew the engine and the pan and everything lined up well and fit, uh, in the background I completed the engine, put that all together, and then uh, buffed it, or sanded everything, wire wheeled it, cleaned it up, and prepped it for the paint, which you can see here. I uh, used a two-part satin black uh, to match the truck, and then I got to putting back in the engine uh, with everything on and made sure that it all still fit and nothing moved, uh, and lo and behold, everything looked great. A little celebratory music for this one. So after you get the engine back in with all these kinds of modifications and everything fits and aligns and the manifold works that was built in the previous video, uh, this is a huge milestone for building a vehicle like this. Um, so it's pretty excited to get this back in because then you can get the tranny back in, start doing all the wiring and really start getting the truck put back together. Uh, so now that everything was in there, the weight was in there, uh, I put the tie rods, everything bolted all that up. Uh, checked the steering again, made sure everything moved freely, um, and everything was working well, nothing hit. Uh, so then it was on to the, the next part of getting the trans back in, getting the new tranny cross member, building all the exhaust, doing all the wiring uh, for the Holly EFI swap. Um, so yeah, a lot more to come, but uh, this was a huge milestone as far as getting the subframe built and the engine in the right spot.